Welcome to Wellness with John. I'm John Peters, and these are resources to help you thrive. This is part two of a seven-part series that I'm doing on acceptance and commitment therapy. So if you haven't watched part one, I'll put a link up here. Go watch that and then come back and watch this one. So in this one, I'm going to talk about cognitive diffusion and both to help you understand it, but also by giving you some teachings that help you implement it in your life. Stay tuned. Okay, so in today's episode, I'm going to talk about cognitive diffusion. You could think of it as cognitive diffusion, but the term that's most often used is cognitive diffusion because it's diffusing us so that we are not fused in an unproductive, unhealthy way with our thoughts and feelings. All right. So let me start off by saying that cognitive behavioral therapy that is attributed mostly to this guy, Beck, uh, it's been around for decades, since the middle part of the last century, actually. And a central part of cognitive behavioral therapy is being able to distance oneself from one's own thoughts in order to productively work with them. Cognitive diffusion could be thought of as a more specific way to talk about how to do that distancing in a healthy way that then allows us to productively work with our thoughts and feelings toward good goals. Okay. So if you want to understand what diffusion is in general, before we get into specific methods of how to try to achieve it, diffusion has to do with diffusing us from fused experiences because fused experiences are ones that A, are miserable often if they're negative in tone, but and B, can be overwhelming, but C, and maybe most importantly, are things that prevent us from having perspective and the ability to fluidly work with what we're experiencing and how we're reacting to what we're experiencing. The most common way that therapists explain to people fused versus defused is if you think about your hands. So if your hands are somewhere not too close to your face and your eyes, your hands make up part of the whole, <clears throat> and therefore you're aware of your hands because they're in your field of vision, but they're part of everything, and you can consider them in context, and you might ignore them for a while, come back to them or whatever. But if you move your hands closer and closer to your eyes until your hands are like this, then you don't really experience the other parts of your world very richly or at all because you're just aware of your hands, right? So as long as your hands are taking up the whole mental space in this example, visual space, but uh, it's analogous to how we experience other things. So if, if something is taking up all of the mental space, then it occludes other things and it crowds out other things, right? So if I move my hands progressively further and further away from my face and I have some distance, right? So I'm not, I'm not escaping my hands, right? I'm not creating this situation where my hands just aren't even evident. I've, I've, I've distracted myself or prevented myself from having awareness of my hands. I'm still aware of my hands. But if I move my hands away, okay, this is part of the whole, but I can still focus on them if I want to, but I have enough distance that I'm not fused with them and the hands become the whole experience. So that's kind of the idea of defusing a person from their thoughts and perceptions and feelings so that you can actually work with diffused thoughts. And primarily the reason that we want to be diffused in, term, in the context of cognitive behavioral therapy, and in this case, in the context of acceptance and commitment therapy, is because sometimes we're working with very complex, challenging situations and the things that we're trying to do in working with them are well served by being defused rather than fused. And, and types of situations, for example, where this would come into play would be if you are experience a, you have like a chronic challenging thought pattern that you ultimately want to work with and change, 
but it's very durable over time. So, you know, if you think about someone, let's say, who doesn't have a lot of confidence and they uh, frequently feel negatively about themselves in social situations because they are anxious about their performance and they don't have a lot of confidence and they have relatively low self-esteem, obviously their, their long-range goals to improve that in the short term there might be these thoughts that are very chronic and very durable that come up that are features of that, that set of issues. And you can't just in one therapy session or, you know, magically snap your fingers and make all of that irrelevant because it might be a long process of changing that towards something better. So you, in the interim, you have to deal with this chronic situation and thoughts and feelings arise in the middle of that that actually work against the overall therapeutic goal. So being defused from those thoughts would be supportive of more optimally achieving that goal. Another thing might be a chronic situation where you're trying to restructure some thoughts through cognitive behavioral techniques, but the restructuring is resistant to that process because you're so fused with them. So for example... Let's say somebody's working with a relationship issue and they're having very complex thoughts and feelings and reactions to their partner. And it's such a triggering situation that when they get triggered, they're just really fused with those perceptions, those uh, reactions of the situation. And being fused makes it harder for them to work with trying to shift their thinking so that they improve the way they experience and react to the situation. So <clears throat> regardless of what you're doing in the restructuring process, it might go better if you're more diffused than fused, right? Another example of when diffusion could be very helpful would be if you're dealing with a chronic stressful situation and you actually on examination think that you're thinking about it and feeling about it and reacting to it just fine, you know, optimally and pointed in the right direction. But the situation itself is just really stressful and emotionally burdensome. And being more diffused in the thoughts and feelings that come up in the middle of the situation might make it less miserable and might lead to a more optimal way of dealing with it in terms of your CBT approach or your ACT approach. So th th those are some, some examples. And there are other reasons why diffusion is supportive of cognitive restructuring and of other types of cognitive behavioral techniques that we do with ourselves and in tandem with our therapist and toward all sorts of personal goals. So let me give you some examples of techniques that are very practical for a lot of people. And some of these you might not resonate with and they might not work for you, but um, some of them might. So I'm going to throw out uh, a few here and you can kind of mentally try them on and work with them as you see fit. So number one, a very common one that we therapists teach people is the technique of saying to the self, I am having the thought, blah, blah, blah. I am having the feeling so-and-so. Um, so, you know, this is, this is sometimes very helpful as a very simple, quick way to become more diffused from a thought. If uh, th There's one thing if, if in my head I say, Tom is a jerk. And it's another thing if I say, I am having the thought that Tom is a jerk, right? Simply just naming it as a thought is often very helpful to add just one measure of disconnection there in order to be more diffused and then work with the thought, work with the perception, work with the reaction better. So another way to, to uh, defuse ourselves is to label the type of thought that it is. So for example, I might say to myself, I am having some worry come up or I'm catastrophizing or I am making a black and white kind of judgment about the situation. And so we're not necessarily renaming the thought, we're labeling the thought, right? So if I catch myself thinking, oh my God, I can't pay my bills this month. Oh man, then I'm gonna get evicted. And when I get evicted, I'm gonna be homeless and there's all this stuff, then that I'll be at risk of, you know, so I'm, and then I just stop and say, okay, I'm catastrophizing. As soon as I do that, I have one level of disconnection from that thought process, and it helps me defuse from all those individual thoughts that were part of the process of catastrophizing, right? Now, with any of these techniques, I'll say this. Sometimes a way to make them work more strongly, or if people say they're, they're not working at all, or they're too weak, um, 
do them slower because when we do things slowly, then we access certain parts of our brain that we don't access when we're on fast mode and autopilot, right? So, so like in the first example I gave, so Tom is a jerk. I am having the thought that Tom is a jerk. When I say it slowly, it becomes more compelling for me, and that sometimes makes it uh, more effective. Now, here's another one. A friend of mine years ago taught me this one, and she said she was actually uh, explaining it as a technique that she did as part of her meditation practice. But she said when, when random thoughts arise and she doesn't want to become fused with them and then follow them during her meditation, she just imagines it as though she's sitting at a bus stop and her thoughts are buses that are coming by and they stop at the bus stop so they're an opportunity to get on. But instead of getting on any particular thought bus, she just stays sitting at the bus stop and lets that thought bus go on down the line, right? I thought that was an interesting uh, metaphor to use there too. Another bus metaphor that we teach people for diffusion is imagine that you're the driver of a bus and the bus is on this journey and the journey is a metaphor for your life. So your life goes on. There are all sorts of experiences, thoughts, perceptions, feelings, and things that happen on this journey. And you can imagine that any given thought is just a person who happens to be riding on your bus at that moment in time. So you're the driver, you're driving a bus. The bus is filled with all different elements of your experience, including thoughts. And so when you realize that you're having a really strong thought that you're fused with, then you say, oh, so that's a, that's a thought. It's on my bus, and it'll be on my bus for a while because I'm the driver of this entire journey. But at some point, I might stop, and that thought may get off and get replaced by a different thought. Right? See your thought as a temporary rider on the bus of your journey. Right? Now, another technique is uh, imagine, first you, you, you have an awareness of the thought. Then what you do is you imagine that you're standing right at the edge of a beach where the water comes up and that your thought is written in the sand at your feet right in front of you. So that's your thought. You can see it written in the sand. And then the waves come in and two or three wave cycles end up washing that thought into smooth sand so that you can't see the writing at all. That's an interesting way. Another way that it includes writing like that is imagine the thought and then imagine that you're spray painting out on the side of a box truck, right? Like a big U-Haul truck size box truck. And so you spray paint your thought down the side of it and then the truck drives away, right? So the, the driving away part is sometimes helpful. And another similar one that people sometimes do is you think of the thought and you imagine like placing the thought on a leaf that's in a stream and then it goes on down and it's gone because it goes around the bend and is gone down the stream. Um, I also had a, a friend of mine who, did, who led a guided meditation one time where he suggested that you think of all these thoughts that you actually want to be defused from and you imagine putting them in a canoe, but you're not getting in the canoe. You're just putting them in the canoe, and then you just gently shove the canoe off, and it floats away from you across a lake or down a stream or something like that. That's kind of uh, another interesting one. So, um, so anyway, so th these are examples of ways that you can work with thoughts to become diffused. And, and again, one thing to think about is we're not in, in diffusion, we're not trying to do the restructuring or other types of cognitive techniques where we're trying to rework the experience, rework the thought, right? That is a component of cognitive approaches. Um, but in this diffusion case, what we're basically doing is we're trying to diffuse ourselves so that we're not so fused with the thought that we can't work with it, right? We're providing some healthy mental space so that we actually have the opportunity to then work with it. Um, because the tone of thoughts can be really negative and make us stressed and miserable, and that can both be subjectively miserable, but can prevent us from working fluidly and optimally with whatever it is we're focused on and working with and, and our goals. Um, but also, you know, uh, why make the process more arduous than it has to be? Diffusion, I think, is a way to 
steer the process toward something that's more light. Now, not light in the sense of weak and ineffective, but light in tone, right? And speaking of that, one more technique I want to leave with you today <clears throat> before we end this video is, is um, sometimes a way to be diffused from a thought is to imagine, you know, so you, you're aware of the thought, you clearly identify it, and then you say uh, the thought to yourself again, you just repeat the thought in your head, and then you play in your head uh, silly music behind it. So, so listen to this song right here. Imagine having whatever serious thought you were fused with, but instead of remaining fused, you're singing in your head while imagining this type of silly music and you just say the thought over and over in a really silly way or another way to do it is is say the thought to yourself in like a mickey mouse voice like you just sucked a helium balloon or something or you know sing the song sing the thought as a song but do it in a way that has an incongruent tone with the seriousness of the original thought so that it defuses you so i might think I suck. I'm a failure. I, I really ruined that interaction with that person. Okay, so that might be the fused version. And then if I say, I suck. I'm a failure. I really did not do that right. And it, it, it adds mirth. The mirth is incongruent with the original dire I suck kind of tone. And the incongruence then ends up helping me be diffused from the way I was fused with it in the beginning when I first had the thought. So those are some tricks. There are lots of ways to be diffused. Uh, feel free to try these on. And also feel free, you know, of course, if you've got a serious issue that you're struggling with, to get some, some good support from a therapist who works with CBT. And, and in this case, I think especially someone who's going to work with acceptance and commitment therapy because diffusion is a very central thing that we do in the ACT modality. So if you like these videos, feel free to hit the like button below. Feel free to comment, subscribe, and share quite freely. And one last thing that I want to share with you uh, before I go is that if you like the mode of ACT, the tone, the tenor of this approach, I have a, a seven-lesson stress management book that uh, teaches you some easy-to-practice techniques that are very effective to quickly produce reliable results of lower stress and lower anxiety. And so if you'd like to get that free ebook that gives you those lessons, um, just go to courses.johnpeters.online slash free stress ebook. I'll put the link below this video as well. So just click through and you can get the ebook and get a, a free ebook that can teach you techniques to help you be less stressed and less anxious. So thanks for joining me today. And I will see you in episode three of this seven part series where we're going to talk about acceptance.